pay for what Judge Birmingham said, absolutely true. In addition to that, some of the other problems that this court has had is with writs. So um, like a lot of the cases that you hear about exonerations and even the one that just happened with this intellectual disability case that just came down this week, it's via a writs. And there are about four to 5,000 writs per year that this court has to handle. And so you need to make sure, that, number one, that we have enough people reviewing them, enough staff, enough time, enough attention, because I think we can all agree that if you say that you've looked at it, but you've given each one of them 30 seconds, is that really a look, right? And important issues are being addressed. Important issues about junk science, science that is no longer credible, that was a basis of conviction in the original case. Mental health disabilities. Many, many issues that are coming up through these writs that are not getting the type of attention that we want because justice for all also means that even if you were convicted of an offense, if there was something wrong in the case, we should look at it now before it's too late. Thank you. <laughs> one mental health facility in the state of Texas is? It's the Harris County Jail. The number two is the Dallas County Jail. And, um, and that kind of tells you a lot about mental health and the justice system. One of the things that the highest criminal court in the state of Texas has the authority to do, it actually controls funding for the education through grants for judges, lawyers, uh, law enforcement, law students. Um, there is a great deal of money that goes to educating all of these entities that make up the criminal justice system. How and where those priorities are and what we decide to spend it on deals with the people that you put on that bench. And you know that for us, dealing with mental health as we do in the second largest mental facility in the state of Texas, we know a great deal about it, we deal with it every day, and we know that we need to educate our lawyers and our judges more in order to bring up all of criminal justice up so that we don't have to deal with it on appeal as we do now. So that would be my number one priority there. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tina Clinton. I am the presiding judge of Texas Criminal District Court number one in Dallas. It is the oldest criminal district court in the state of Texas. We are on our 126th year and moving. This time I am on the ballot for the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals Place 4. So none of us are against each other. Um, just so that it's easier on you guys. Um, and the reason why I'm running for this race is very easy, and that is that the jurisprudence in Texas on criminal cases is suffering under the current court. Um, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals is your highest criminal court in the state of Texas. As many of you know, um, the highest courts are bifurcated in Texas. So the Supreme Court hears everything but criminal, and the Court of Criminal, he uh, court of criminal Appeals hears only criminal cases. So we are a discretionary court, which means that things go to the trial court, it goes to the appellate court, and this court can then decide to take anything from that um, court that is being appealed up, but they can also deny it. The only thing that is not discretionary in the court um, is death penalty cases. Those go from the trial court straight up to the Court of Criminal Appeals, and those must be heard. So one of the problems that we have in these courts is that it's a discretionary court and many of the cases that could be heard are not being heard. And what's worse is that on many of the writs that are going up to the court, there are cases that are being decided with no reason and rationale being given, which means that the lower courts and attorneys are not getting guidance in the law. I have been in criminal law for 25 years. I'm a current judge. I've been a prosecutor, a defense attorney. I have been a municipal court judge, a misdemeanor judge, and now I'm a felony court judge. I bring that wealth of experience so that I can understand the transcripts of what is on these appellate briefs because I've done it myself. My name is Tina Clinton. I would truly appreciate your vote. Thank you, KBAT. Thank you.